my interests in, in cloud computing re relate to kind of this uh, um, uh, data, analysis, data analysis, data discovery problem of being able to scan through very large volumes of DNA sequences. A lot of the technologies that were developed for cloud computing were actually entirely invented in other disciplines. So in particular, large-scale internet companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter have, have developed these technologies out of necessity. So one of the key technologies that I, that, I, that, I, that I utilize, that I look to, is a technology called MapReduce that was invented at Google. And for a long time, this was their secret sauce, if you will, for being able to do these very large studies of, uh, of many trillions of web pages. Scanning through trillions of web pages is not so different th than scanning through trillions of DNA sequences. A lot of the, a lot of the approaches that you would use for that, those studies are, are exactly the same. So I've, I've borrowed heavily from uh, kind of that sort of community, the text mining database community. And then any sort of discipline where there's, there tends to be a large volumes of data, these technologies are, are, are rapidly uh, gaining traction just because they are so powerful. The first main technical challenge is, is if we have many thousands of genomes we want to study, how can we load all that information into the cloud, right? The, 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 the way you would want to do that is you know, through your web browser or through your computer. But the, the, the internet capacity is only, is only so big. And if you have to ship you know, this conceptual pile of two, of two miles of DVDs, shipping that around on the internet takes, for, takes, uh, takes too long. There are some uh, ways to overcome this. It's a little bit funny to think about it, but, but in some ways the most practical way to ship very large data sets is to use FedEx or UPS or some sort of physical shipment of hard drives through the mail. It's not, a, you know, it's not the sexy application that you would want for an internet company, but that's a, that's a practical way to do it. So that's the main technical barrier. And then uh, storing data in the cloud opens up a lot of uh, other challenges. In particular, there's a lot of privacy concerns about making sure that that data is, is really well guarded. Uh, your, your genome is your, has a lot of information about uh, who you are, what sort of diseases you're susceptible to. Could say a lot about your family, about your children, about your ancestors. You know, it's, it's precious information that we, that we definitely don't want to um, expose without, without giving it some consideration. So the concern is, is if, if all of this genetic information is in, a, is in the cloud, and you're not careful about how that data is protected, it could leak out, it could, uh, you know, you know, could accidentally be exposed to other people. And then also, if big archives are made that has collected many thousands of people, this could suddenly become an attractive target. So today, we're a little bit guarded in the sense that this genetic information is decentralized in many different labs, so that if there's a breach at one lab, it's, it's relatively localized. If everything gets aggregated together, it becomes a little bit more risky because it becomes a little bit more attractive as a target. I think these challenges can be overcome. Uh, the, the encryption technologies, the authentication technologies, they exist. They, they certainly exist. And there are companies that, that run with the highest level of security at, at Amazon Cloud and other cloud resources. It is, it is certainly possible to do so. But we, we just got to be so certain that we get it right on the first try. Right? We don't want to create this big database that has all this genetic information and then accidentally uh, uh, leave it vulnerable. So we just have to be really careful about how that's engineered.